Hi, folks. My name is Rebecca Cullors. I am presenting today uh, for CPA Connect School of Technology um, Intermediate Level um, Week One of our PC laptop. So here's the title slide. Um, so yeah, a um, little introduction of myself. I am an AmeriCorps service member. Um, I serve through the Greater Cleveland Neighborhood Centers Association Community Connector Corps, and I am the uh, dedicated liaison working with Community Partnership on Aging. Um, we have a couple different uh, teams with Community Connector Corps, and I serve with the iConnect team. We work to provide tech support to seniors, as well as um, some life enrichment programming online. Um, we have done that more in person historically, but now um, we're doing it pretty much all on Zoom due to COVID. And so that was kind of the genesis of um, developing this program with Community Partnership on Aging called CPA Connects. Um, we wanted to provide this school of technology for um, older adults who may not feel as confident about their computer skills um, to just kind of give that opportunity to flex that muscle. So um, we'll get going. Week one is pretty basic. I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, so as I've titled this solid foundation, we're just gonna be going over some pretty general stuff, um, information uh, to better work with your device. Um, this presentation is being recorded after the fact. So um, we did, when we first did this, we had it with program participants so that we did take some time to introduce as we're gonna spend the next eight weeks together, but you did get my introduction. So it's not all for naught, but let's dive right in. I wanna make sure that we have that um, common understanding of basic terminology. So um, I've taken the opportunity to uh, go over some basic terms here with you. Um, and these are in alphabetical order, so we may kind of circle around as some things interconnect. But um, apps, apps is short for applications. This is basically software um, for your computer. Um, I'm not sure where this little box is going as we're recording, but it's not that important. Anyway, um, uh, uh, and they're generally, historically have been thought of being used on a smartphone or a tablet, but more and more apps are being made for um, laptops too. So uh, you'll see that term even for your PC and laptop. A browser. This is the program that you use to look at web pages. So that's um, Chrome, Google Chrome, Firefox, Microsoft Edge, Safari is your Apple browser. Um, Sorry, I didn't put that on there. Um, Internet Explorer was kind of the original browser. Um, it's not viewed as being very safe anymore. Most machines don't have it on there. Um, but if you have an older device, you may still have Internet Explorer. Um, I would definitely recommend that you uh, download a different type of browser because IE does not have the kind of firewalls that you need to protect yourself from hackers. So um, yeah, there's occasionally you'll come across an, a government website that says it'll only work with IE and that uh, kind of lets you know how out of date some of our government systems are. But at any rate, uh, moving on, bandwidth. Uh, this indicates how quickly the information travels through the connection. You've heard about 4G and 5G, the newest cell phones are on 5G. Um, there were even some people through the pandemic who were convinced that 5G was causing <laughs> coronavirus. So yeah, but um, that that is an indication of how quickly your your um, connection can transmit information. Byte is an amount of data, and that's uh, what we talk in terms of your machine being able to uh, store uh, gigabytes. Um, I just got a new Chromebook and it came with 100 gigs. Um, smartphone, you wanna generally have at least like 64. Um, the newer the device, the generally the more gigs 
they come with. Um, the technology just gets better and better. Um, but you'll usually hear things in terms of megabytes or gigabytes and one gigabyte equals 1000 megabytes. So yeah, a gig is bigger, just FYI. Cookies, um, it's a small file that's sent to your computer uh, when you visit a website that helps that website recognize your device the next time you go. So it will sign you in quickly. It will remember your password. Um, the, the visuals will download more quickly. Um, so it is more convenient to have that little cookie, but um, it is also a way to track you. So um, that website is remembering some basic uh, stuff about your device for when you next go. So there was recently a lawsuit uh, out of California within the past few years where um, people were concerned about privacy invasion. And so that is why you've begun to see uh, a little notice post every time you go on a website. It, it lets you know that it ha has cookies and it um, asks you if it's allowed to use cookies. And then you just kind of click accept and keep going on about your business. But um, you can, uh, you know, go further into that and kind of say what kind of cookies, what kind of tracking you want, um, use your discretion. But yeah, you're definitely having uh, information taken down about you as you travel the, the internet. So it's kind of just the price we pay to have the convenience of the devices. Uh, CPU, the central processing unit, it, the brain, if you will, of your computer. Um, more and more uh, devices are being made to be mobile, um, or if it is a desktop, it's an all-in-one unit, so everything's connected. But um, back in the day, and some of you may still have a type where you have the monitor screen that's on the top of your desk, and then there's sort of what they might call a tower or a, a bigger piece that's underneath your desk. And that tower is where the actual brain, if you will, of your computer is. That's where all the, the working parts are. Um, download. We're going to come later in the um, list here to the word upload. And I kind of want to draw the, the difference between the two. So when you download information, you're taking um, files or images or whatever it is um, that's outside of your device and you're bringing it in and storing it onto your device. You may even create a file that on your computer and then you download it, save it to your computer. So it's anything that doesn't already come on your computer and you're bringing it and saving it into your computer. When you upload, you're taking a file from your own memory on your device and sending it out somewhere else in the world via email attachment. You maybe have to upload something, uh, some kind of um, form or who knows what, social security, um, college, community college, whatever. It could be anything that you have to like put something that you have stored on your device out. So that's uploading, downloading, bringing in. Just to remember the difference. Firewalls are um, soft or hardware that restrict data. Um, that one of the issues I was saying earlier about Internet Explorer is not viewed as like a trusted browser. It just doesn't have the good firewalls that the newer browsers have to uh, restrict information getting to hackers. So these are ways built into the software that um, kind of protect your security and safety. The graphics card is the hardware that's responsible for the visual quality of your computer. This is going to be important to someone who does any kind of gaming. Um, also, potentially um, for people who are doing art, uh, this can be uh, uh, important. You'll see Intel inside a lot. Um, so this is a famous company that um, works with the graphics, but there's a lot of different people who are providing these services. Uh, your hard drive stores the files and the data on your computer. This can also be an external device. If you have a bit of an older system or you just have a lot of data, um, you may need to have more space than what your device provides. Um, so you can buy an external hard drive and still store some of your information. So if you have a lot of pictures or whatever the case may be, there's more ways to get more storage. 
modem somewhere in your house if you have wi-fi there's a little box that's uh connected it looks like through the phone line it's got a usb cord and that little box is is from, probably from uh, the same company that's providing if you had a landline um but also like your tv subscription service um but that's broadcasting out the Wi-Fi to your home. And that little device is called the modem, that little box. The monitor is the display screen. So we were talking about that separate screen on top of your desk and the tower underneath. That display screen is called the monitor. Operating system. This is the platform that all of the other software on your device is working out of. So this could be Microsoft Windows, this could be Google, this could be Apple. It's dependent on what kind of device you have, but this is like the base software for the whole rest of your system. Rebooting. It seems a little, we pay all this money to get this state-of-the-art technology, and sometimes the best thing you can do to make it work is just turn it off and turn it on again. And that's what rebooting is. Um, and especially if you have an older device, it can really help to just kind of sync everything up, get everything catched up again, um, caught up again, uh, uh, just turn it off and turn it on. So it actually has a, an official name, Reboot. Um, search engine. People get a little confused between what's the browser and what's the search engine. So the, the browser is the, the, the software that you're opening to access web pages. The search engine is what you the the page that you go to where you can ask questions or look up. Um, I don't know the address to type into the address bar, so I just look up the name of the organization or the product, and then I click on it, and it takes me to it. That's through a search engine. It gets confusing, especially because Google, when you have Google Chrome, it also acts as a search engine when you just type something into the address bar. If you went to your Yahoo search engine, it would not act the same way when you typed the, the query or the organization into the address bar. So slightly different, um, just to be mindful of that. Software are the programs that are running on your computer. Uh, spam is junk email. We get plenty of ads in our mailbox at home and we also can get some junk email in our email uh, inbox. So that's called spam. Uh, some of it gets filtered out and you can also designate things as to be delivered to the spam folder. SSD card is another way to store data, um, more so for mobile devices, but uh, we talked about uploading and then got a series of terms here, virus, spyware, trojan, and worm are all different types of malware. Uh, these are things that can infect your computer and allow others to kind of steal your information, hack your device. Um, so that's why it's important to have those good firewalls and have good protection on your computer. Um, but yeah, malware, kind of like the catch-all term, each of those virus, spyware, Trojan worm, they're a specific type of malware, but um, yeah, none of it's good. <laughs> have good firewalls. Okay, um, so when we're trying to navigate the internet, uh, more and more you'll, you'll see icons that represent things to just click on. So um, there's some basic ones that you just want to commit to memory so that you can easily navigate your device. When you see the X, you're closing something out. You're closing a browser tab, a window. Um, it just, it didn't, erase it necessarily, but it's just closing it down. Um, this sort of little arc with the dot is a symbol for Wi-Fi. So that this is uh, usually you, if you have this on the bottom taskbar on your browser window, the, um, you can click on that and connect to Wi-Fi. If you're on a PC that's just always sort of staying on your desk, once you get connected to Wi-Fi, when you turn your device on, it will remember uh, that same Wi-Fi, recognize that Wi-Fi, and it will just 
tap into it again. But if you're using a laptop that you're taking places and you want to, um, maybe you went to the library and you want to connect on their Wi-Fi there, you're going to have to learn where on your computer is the, the way that you can click in. And if you see this little icon that will, you'll probably be able to click on that and connect to the Wi-Fi in a public place. So good thing to know. Uh, trash can, this is deleting something. Um, some devices have a second step where you have to empty the trash can. Um, so if you throw something away, it doesn't always mean that it's gone, but if you're trashing it, you should be ready to not be able to find it again because some devices don't have that second step. So if you're if you're throwing it in the trash can, be prepared that you're not going to see it again. So you might be better to close sometimes than to, to totally trash. This little microphone we've all become a lot more familiar with with our Zoom sessions during COVID. But this is um, giving you an option to be able to do some kind of talking and or recording on your device. So if you see the microphone, it's just what you think it is, <laughs> um, a place for audio for, for you to your device. Um, these next two are different symbols for favoriting things. Sometimes you'll see the banner without the star. Sometimes you'll see just the star. Um, but they can be together and then uh, sometimes you'll see the heart. But this is a way that you can click and favorite something. Maybe you're shopping on Etsy and you um, are really liking something, but you're not going to get it today. So you click the little heart on the screen and then that saves it to your favorites page. If you're in Google Chrome, you can um, click on the star and save that page to um, your favorites so you can find it again later. Um, good ways to keep track of things without having to keep a million tabs open all the time. These next two are really important for navigating the internet. These are your overflow menus. Um, this one is sometimes referred to as the, the hamburger icon, but these are ways to access more options on whatever the web page is. Usually when you see the three dots, that's more settings on your um, a browser or, or some website, it's gonna give you more options of things to do. When you see the three lines, a lot of times it's sort of like an expanded menu to tell you what the other pages on a given site will hold. Um, you can click on this and maybe you'll see like women's clothing, men's clothing, or the different um, facets of an organization will each have their own page. And this will expand and give you more options of things to click on. Um, whereas if you just had all that stuff on the main homepage, it could look a little cluttered. So these two are going to take you to more information about the website that you're on. When you see the magnifying glass, that means search. Uh, you may have that uh, when you're looking for an app at your Play Store. You may have that um, when you're on a search engine and you're looking for a query. Um, a lot of times websites have their own internal search. So I'm at the Community Partnership on Aging website, but I don't know how to find out where the cafe pop-up list is. So I look for the magnifying glass so that I can just type in cafe pop-up and then it'll tell me, it'll give me a link to click on to take me internally on their website to find it. Magnifying glass always means search. Um, this little gear is similar to your overflow menus in that it accesses, it, it will access settings. So um, it sometimes will look different on different sites depending, but it's in that shape of like a gear. And that again is always gonna take you to more options for how to manipulate that website or device that you're on. Very important to know. This little guy that kind of almost looks like a triangle without the one side here, this means share. So I'm at a web page and I think my friend might find this interesting or I've taken a really great picture or I found a really good image online and I wanna send it to another friend. If I find this little sort of angle with the dots on the corners, um, that that will 
I can click on that and then I, they will give me instructions on, on how I can share that particular page or image. Oopsies. Uh, this is refresh. Sometimes refresh doesn't just has one arrow. It's like a circle with one arrow, but it always is sort of, it's like reloads the page. Um, we talked about rebooting, uh, turning off and turning on the computer to kind of get everything settled in and working correctly. Refresh has some of the same function um, and it will also uh, give you the most up-to-date information. So perhaps you had a window open for a minute uh, with your email and it looks, somebody said, I just sent you, but it did, you don't see it there yet. So if you hit the refresh page, um, it might pop up then because it'll just kind of reload everything and give you that most current information. There are many more icons online, uh, but these are a few definitely to commit to memory. Um, you'll see more as we go along. On the bottom left or right hand corner of your screen that you have what's called a control panel and this gives you further access to files on your device or settings on your device. Your, um, your settings are one of the most important places on your computer or smartphone um, that's going to let you change the display screen, control the volume setting, change the size of the font, um, access any files that are stored, um, everything that you wanna sort of like, where is it, how do I change it, all through settings. And you can find that through your control panel. There'll also probably be some quick links in your control panel. Um, perhaps to connect to Bluetooth. Again, that Wi-Fi might be in there. Each device is a little bit different. You're gonna to have to check yours and see, but if you sort of hover at that, there'll be like a little uh, button at the, on the screen and that you can click on on the bottom right hand or left hand corner, and that'll open up and give you that little control panel, give you a few more options to access places on your device. I just was sort of talking about settings and it really is your new BFF when it comes to your device and navigating it. Um, you'll, you have settings for your actual computer. So again, that's like that brightness I was talking about, the, um, the, all the system setting type things on, your, on the physical appearance of your computer. Um, and then you also have browser settings if you're using Google Chrome, Safari, Microsoft Edge, and that's going to change the appearance and the setup of um, how you're actually navigating on the internet. So things that you'll find in settings include things like system and security, connecting to a network, um, the hardware and the sound, user accounts, the appearance on your computer, the clock, the language it's set in, all those kind of things are all in settings. Talked a little bit already about connecting to Wi-Fi. You can, there'll generally be that quick link icon or you can go through settings to access. Um, once you've logged on to Wi-Fi somewhere, your device will remember that Wi-Fi. And when you go there again, when you just click on the quick link, you'll, it'll remember and it'll connect right to it. Sometimes you won't even have to click anything at all. It'll just roll over and go into it. Um, little advice, particularly for um, your modem at home, uh, there's on listed on there, we were talking about that's that little box that's um, putting out the signal of your Wi-Fi. Um, there's a long password on there. It's a string of letters and numbers that you would never remember because it was just sort of generated by a computer by the company that's providing your service. Um, and you might want to take a picture of that with your phone so that you don't have to try to write it down or figure it out or you can't drag your desktop over that you'll have because you'll never remember that long string. But if you take a picture of it, then you'll have that on your phone right in your pocket. 
um, talked about this with rebooting, but yes, sometimes simply just turning it off and turning it back on again will help get things sorted out. Updates are really important. Sometimes people have a fear around um, putting updates on because they think that uh, maybe someone is trying to hack into their computer through that. Um, the firewalls are really, really good at this point. Now, of course, people do still get hacked into, it's possible, but you need to do those updates to get your device to be properly working. What happens sort of as soon as we buy a device, it's kind, it's kind of like a car in that it's depreciating um, and it's becoming um, outdated almost <laughs> as soon as we get it, unfortunately. Um, and the way that they keep older devices being able to interface with the newer, newest technology that comes out is by doing these updates. They kind of create like a patch, if you will, that um, allows your device to keep talking with the newest software. Um, sometimes also uh, programs come out and I mean, you know, computer programs are developed by people, so they're not always perfect. You may have heard um, the term beta in reference to computer programs. This is when something is released in a sort of test run phase. But um, as people are using it and then they notice, oh, hey, it doesn't work properly when it's in this certain configuration or when I try to go on to this certain type of website, it does, this program doesn't work properly. And so they create these sort of patches with the updates to fix that issue. Um, so if you want your device to run optimally and to work at top speed and to be able to connect to all the different types of websites that you're trying to go to, you wanna do all those updates to keep it just working well. Battery care and charging cord. Um, the debate rages on some people like to let their battery run down and they think that that um, preserves the longest life of the battery. Others like to keep their device charged up. I am a charger upper. I get a little bit uncomfortable if my device drops below 50%. So I like to keep it charged up, but um, there, it's really just a matter of choice. One hasn't been definitively proven over the other to be more efficacious in keeping the length of life of your battery. Um, that said, it is generally agreed that when you get a new battery, you should let it run down a couple times, a couple few times, and, um, that, and that's called discharging when you let the battery run down. But that letting it discharge a few times will promote, prolong the life of the battery. So you may want to do that. Um, something to know, your cord is specific to your device. Um, they do have some universal kits that you can buy that have different heads that fit in, but you do need a specific cord for your specific device. And sometimes they can be a little pricey. Uh, you may not be able to just run up to the corner store excuse me, and get one. You may have to order one and it may couple, take a couple of days. So I suggest to everyone that they keep a spare on hand of their cords for their devices. I'm talking at this point in terms of a laptop uh, for this class because your PC, that one you're not really moving around. So your cord isn't coming into the same kind of um, just wear and tear that um, uh, laptop that you're moving around and plugging and unplugging and winding up and winding out, like all that action on that cord, things just get frayed over time. But um, yeah, your cord is gonna die well before your uh, device does. So you definitely will, well, almost probably, almost certainly will need at some point to replace a cord. And you don't want to get caught flat footed. Like I say, um, if you have to order it online, even with Prime, it can take, you know, a full day before it comes. So word of the wise, it's good to have a spare. We talked about cookies and the terminology. That's that little file that gets sent from a website that helps it to remember your device. 
Um, and if your device is running slowly, it can help to clear out those cookies and also what's called the cache. This is another sort of memory of one of the places that you've gone on the internet. Uh, in Google Chrome, you can access that through that little overflow menu that I pointed out with the three dots. It's in the upper right hand corner of your browser. You'll click on privacy and security and then clear browsing data. One, you can make selection too. It's gonna to give you an option for your cookies, your cache, and it's gonna give you an option for your uh, search history. So if you're for device slowness, search history isn't gonna really um, affect that if you to clear that and then you won't get um, some of your autofills uh, if you do clear out the history. Word to the wise, when you clear out your cookies, you are going to also clear out your passwords that are sort of auto populated uh, when you go to a website. So just bear that in mind, you're going to have to re-enter. So just something to think about. But if your device is running slow, you may want to clear out the cookies in the caption. Oh my goodness, that's it. This presentation has been brought to you in partnership by the Community Partnership on Aging and iConnect. I thank you for taking the time to check us out. I hope that this presentation was helpful. And um, yeah, this was just week one, like I said, no basics. So we are all on the same uh, sort of baseline, same page. Uh, we'll be getting into a little bit more details as we carry on through the weeks. So I'm gonna stop sharing and stop recording. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care.